So let me just give a warm welcome to everybody on Facebook on behalf of Palcos and the Portugal US Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our webinar on Portuguese culinary traditions for the holidays. As I said, we have here a team of uh, award-winning chefs to talk between them and with us about um, Portuguese food. David Leite will moderate our uh, conversation tonight. David is uh, the owner and founder of uh, Lead Culinaria, award-winning blog, and also a cookbook uh, writer with some awards as well. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining. We want to also thank SIC, SPT, who um, very generously helped us with the filming and recording of some portions for this program. Uh, thank you for the collaboration. Thank you all for being here and giving your time to this event. David, the Magda, floor is thank, yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'm honored to be the moderator here and I am in such august company. There are enough Michelin stars amongst these people to fill up an entire sky. So I will introduce you to each of them. Jose Medalis, there's Antonio Gonzalez and David Costa. And a little bit about each of them. Uh, Jose was born and raised in Amaranth, Portugal. And he moved to America in 1983 after graduating from the French Culinary Institute and working as a professional chef in New York. He opened the famed Leal in 1990. And you may know that from Anthony Bourdain. Um, and it's kosher sister restaurant Le Marais in 1995, and you can find him um, and on Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown Porto episode on HBO Max. And of course, if you go to Leal or, or uh, Le Marais, if you've ever been there, you've, you know what he's about. And then Chef David Costa was born in Portugal where he graduated from culinary school and David worked at restaurant 11 in Lisbon under Chef Joaquim Copeter. It's an excellent restaurant. I was there many years ago and I loved it. I was there twice. Uh, he was there when they awarded it its first one star by the Michelin Guide and as the first restaurant in Lisbon to receive that international award. Then he moved on to Asin Asinatura at the Four Seasons Hotel Ritz. Forgive my Portuguese people. Uh, and in 2015, he opened up Adega Restaurant in San Jose, which is where he's at now. Uh, and a few months later, Adega was recognized by the Michelin Guide with one star. And then Chef Antonio Gonzalez, uh, Chef of Canopy, in the Ritz-Carlton, Westchester. He captures the essence of Portugal in his Mediterranean cooking with seasonal menus comprised of local farm fresh ingredients. And the creative approach and, uh, and that creative approach to nature makes Canopy a one of a kind culinary destination that simply can't be missed. It's been heralded by everyone, including the New York Times. And so welcome, those are our guests. And we're, we have lots of things in store for you folks. We've got several videos of all the chefs cooking different dishes. So I think that we'll probably start with at least one of them. And then after that, we'll talk a bit about those dishes, talk about some of the Portuguese traditions in each of their families and go on to some other videos. So these are great cooking videos. I was fascinated. The first one's a little long, it's about 10 minutes, but I have to tell you, I was concerned at 10 minutes. I watched it, I was utterly fascinated by what they were doing. And that is Antonio and Jose. Antonio is making a cataplana, the bacalhau, which is a cataplana, is a Portuguese dish. It's kind of like a wok with a wok on top. And it's with bacalhau and vegetables. And Jose is making carne de porco with vinho de alhuis, with garlic and, and wine. And it's uh, marvelous. So if we can run that video, you can see what's going on and then we will talk a little bit about it and then ask some questions of the chefs. That's well, Tony, I'm using pork butt and uh, pork belly. So we need some, uh, this is actually quite a nice one, it's, uh, I think it's Neiman Ranch pork uh, and pork belly gives the fattiness to the dish that it needs. So we should put and belly. Uh, basically one and a half inch tubes. And you back it out, to me back it out? Yeah, you know, for my father, calderada, and for my wife, cataplana. So I, I do the, we're doing sort of a calderada and cataplana um, concept. And um, we have the bacalhau, and then we have the fresh bacalhau, because I like the textures of the two fish. 
done with the shrimp and the clams. We'll do potatoes and uh, onions, garlic, and peppers. So as you see so far, very simple. And it's a dish with quite a few uh, very little ingredients, not too much, not too complicated in terms of ingredients. If you do four pounds of meat, I would say about 12 to 15 gloves of garlic. We love garlic. We love so our I guess that this is more about the spend more time preparing than actual cooking. What's kind of fun for Christmas, you can have a bunch of people, you know, cutting the peppers, cutting ingredients, and then the cooking itself will that, be very quick. So that's, I believe that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Enjoying. looking at the two dishes that we're doing here, that it's definitely to enjoy the family yeah, for sure. Yeah. Whenever I use bay leaf, I rather use dry bay leaf. I think they have a much stronger palate. The fresh bay leaves, they they really are too uh, too weak. I think yeah. so. Uh, most times, obvious. I prefer fresh. This one, I go for the dry. So and here it is. Now, <clears throat> the wine. Uh, we should pick a, you should pick a red wine on the lighter side. Uh, in this case, I I choose this one, Quinta do Cabrish, a wine from the down region that's lighter and just make sure you put the full bottle, the meat should be absolutely fully covered, you know? Beautiful. So at this time, I don't season the meat uh, because the salt, you're gonna draw the juices from the meat, so it's not a good idea to, to sure. salt it. So, uh, all right, so, and that's it so far at this point. And then you put it to marinate for between 24 hours up to three days, so that's it. And, and for the cataplana, one thing that I'm going to absolutely encourage is that when cooking the shrimp, you do it uh, separate. Now it's time to cook. I'm going to make a sauce and I'm going to start the cataplana base as well at the same time. And so the sauce is olive oil, garlic, a bay leaf, going with the same intention uh, that Zez said that the dry bay leaf is the way to go. But I want to break down the tomato paste. You want to start to see that break down a bit and melage with the tomatoes and the onions and the garlic. And then we're going to start to build our layers. So I'm going to go in with the bacalhau. And I'm gonna start to add some red pepper. And then we're gonna layer up some green peppers. It's important to get the clams the day before and then rinse them well. And then what you do is you put them in cold water and you add some salt overnight in the refrigerator or at this time of the year here in the States, we leave it outside. That's gonna purge the clams, clean them, on the inside and we're going to make sure we don't have any sand and then if you remember what the next step is going to be closing the katapana and i do know that i have shrimp but i'm going to cook them on the side and do a separate so now it's just sealing this katapana and then control the heat, because we don't want to overcook these guys. To me, is keeping the integrity of everything that you're cooking. Yeah. Well, because otherwise the shrimp will be way overcooked if you don't yeah. cut the blend, of course. And so we want to really enjoy yeah. ourselves and not sacrifice yeah. just the flavor of the shrimp in the katapana, but actually eat the shrimp as well, and yeah? it's not that much work yet anyway, so uh, no. it's fantastic, it looks very good. Thank you. It smells beautiful. Thank you. The, this process is pretty simple. In one layer, all the canned pork that we cut. So at this point, you're gonna season our meat. So I have it some uh, beautiful sea salt. Uh, actually, Antonio has here is some piri piri. Um, the recipe tradition doesn't call for it, but I like things a bit spicy. So I'm gonna add a little bit of piri piri to the canned pork vinaigrette instead of pepper. I prefer the I prefer this flavor of the of the than actually the pepper. So it should be work out well. So then 
We're gonna turn it on to high it and you just wanna wait to the mid start releasing some of the juices and then you're gonna cover and you're gonna cook for about an hour and 45 minutes to two hours on a 275 degrees over. This is gonna be cooked very slow so that keep the meat nice and moist. You can start seeing the the steam coming out. Just wait a couple more minutes and then you're ready to put it in the oven. So now you're gonna put the cover and we're ready to go. The oven has been created at 275 and uh, that's the end of story. So that you're gonna back uh, to our family and drink uh, maybe a glass of Madeira wine, maybe a glass of white wine, red wine, just doing something, you know, that's Christmas. So for that, I collect the extra pork fat uh, that forms on top of the sauce and I'm gonna do that in, a, in, the same, in the same pot that obviously was clean. I'm gonna heat up the render pork fat. You're gonna eat the fat and you're gonna give, uh, finish the dish. Uh, the fat uh, that's in here, that's what you're gonna do with this, is we're gonna do our bread. So I have a couple of slices of uh, country bread that I'm gonna slightly dip them into the fat and then I'm gonna put it in a, in some kind of a pan uh, and I'm gonna roast it in the oven. So, and then you're gonna put the meat in here. You can start here sizzling. Uh, one of the great thing about this dish, the, the first part, the, the first part of the cooking can be done one, two or three days before Christmas. So we don't have to, uh, on Christmas day, you don't have to worry about uh, slapping do those dish. You, pre you prepare it two or three days in advance and all you have to do Christmas day is this part. Yeah. If you are from uh, the northern part of Portugal, you can be familiar with this smell because it starts to smell like rojões. Basic rojões is a similar dish, uh, except we do not marinate. We cook the meat uh, in its own fat very slowly for a couple of hours, and then before serving, we just fry them on the, the pork fat. So this is the same principle of rojões. Give you a couple more minutes, and it should be done. Looks really good. Actually, I have some extra bread that I, I toast before. Basically, you're gonna cover the canned pork with this bread. You're gonna cover the pot and over medium meat, you're gonna let it sweat a bit so the bread soaks up some of the juices of the meat and then you'll, uh, very soon you'll be ready to eat. And I think we are done here. And bon appetit. You got it? I'm still at can put the mini lunch. Merry Christmas. The piece of bread on top. Then you just take the the can pork here on top of the bread. This is you great. from Algarve. You should come and try it. See if it's uh, exactly. See if your husband grabbed Algarve yes. spirit. So. Andrea. Hi everybody. <laughs> I was behind looking if my husband do these lines. <laughs> She's watching me. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> As you should, my love. Mm. I teach you very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, yeah? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, both of you. That was that was terrific. And I hope you at home realize how many cooking techniques you just saw. Cooking with dried cod, cooking with fresh cod, baking, uh, dealing with uh, shrimp, also with the different cuts of meat that Jose did for the canasada and uh, using the bread. And I think it's fascinating. One of the things too, gentlemen, I don't know if you realize this, but Portuguese cooks are one of the very few in the world that actually will braise meat and then sear it. Almost everyone will sear the meat, then braise it. 
But Portugal, we do that differently. Do you agree? Yes, in certain, in certain aspect, yes. And also, uh, there's another scene when I was talking about doing the scene, doing the opposite that everybody, I, I remember growing up, one of my favorite dish was Kanst Father com Macaron. That's, that's basically a pasta with a ragu. So, and they never cook the pasta separately, you know, they, they do the ragu and they cook the pasta on the juice of the base meat. So, you know, for Italian, that would be a disaster. But it was so wonderful. I have so many memories of that dish. So. Yeah. And uh, Jose, what were some of the herbs besides the dry bay leaf? What else did you have there? With the uh, I, use, uh, I use thyme and oregano. Oregano. Okay. Oregano. Oregano. They call yes. Sibirelia in Madeira. Now, and, that's, and so basically that dish is from Madeira, right? So, yeah. yeah. I'm not from Madeira. My wife is from Madeira. So right. that's why I decided to do the dish. So. She'll be happy. <laughs> Excellent. And then, um, Antonio, that dish obviously is very much from the Algarve, uh, you know, with the Cataplana. Is your family's, is your wife's family from the Algarve? So, yeah, my wife is from the Algarve. And, um, you know, in, in our household, she's the one that sort of uh, corrected me <laughs> in how I was using the Cataplana. <laughs> and uh, I very, very happily adjust uh, and pivot well. So, um uh, and she's 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 uh, she's just here a year from the Algarve, so she's uh, what she brings to the table here in that in the kitchen is uh, a lot of fun and a lot of tradition, which is great. And so, for all three of you, uh, David, Antonio, and Jose, what were some of the main courses that you had growing up around Christmas time, Christmas Eve, or Christmas Day? Um, when it came to the fish and also the meat, because Christmas Eve is almost always fish. It's not really meat, right? Yeah, that's right. I, I grew up with a bacalhau con suada. That's the boiled cod fish with all the vegetables, carrots, uh, and boiled eggs. And uh, you also, uh, so you also had always, always was filets to both. That was the breaded octopus. That was a must. Uh, that's what my memory is. And of course, on Christmas Day, was the famous Hopa Valley, that to me was my favorite. And tell everyone what Hopa Valley is, in case they don't know. Well, Hopa Valley is you take the leftovers of the bacalhau the day before, and you cut the vegetables in the smaller pieces, and the bacalhau, uh, the, and the, all the mix all together in one pot with a little olive oil, a little vinegar, garlic, and uh, you let it steam a bit on the oven or on top of the stove, and that's it. That was literally a way to use the leftovers from the day before. And then it means old clothes, Corpavalia, and it looks like old torn clothes. And uh, what about you, David Costa? What did you have in your family Christmas Eve, Christmas Day for main courses? Normally in, normally in 24, it's, uh, it's make the, the, the traditional codfish. It's boiled with the carrots, tarni, pan, uh, kale. It's the regular one. And, uh, and they make the octopus in same. My, my father is from the north of Portugal. He's from Porto. And uh, it's normally in, Port in, in Porto, in the north, use the, the octopus. And every time my mom make the octopus, and the, in, in the 25, it's the, normally it's the Hopa Velha. It's my favorite thing, same. <laughs> and uh, it's normally used the, the suckling pig or the, the sheep or goat. It's uh, normally heat, heat meat in 25 in the Hopa Velha. Okay, I got a question from Facebook here. What's the difference between Vinedalius and Carno Esperto? Well, it's a Carno Esperto is a, is a, a kebab, a cheese kebab. It's a bit, you, they cut the pieces of beef, usually is, is, uh, is made with beef. Uh, so they put in, in cubes, they put on a stick that usually is a laurel. It's a laurel, it's a laurel yeah. stick and they grill, and they put on the grill. They season with garlic and uh, bay leaf and put on the grill. The vinyl is with the pork and is a different, it's, a, it's basically a braised meat. Yeah, and so Loro is, uh, in case the people don't know on Facebook, it's um it's a bay leaf tree, so that the skewer is actually from the bay leaf wood. Yes. Exactly, all right. And so what about, for all three of you, um, another comment, uh, people have bacalhau con patatas y grelius, uh, cabrito asado, yes, that, that would be for Christmas day, I'm assuming, right? Bacalhau con patatas y grelius. And cabrito asado. Definitely yeah, that, that was our house. So that, that's one of the dishes that we had okay. um, on a Christmas day. 
yeah. my father would be the one that would be handling that. And, you know, uh, that's the, um, the, the dish and, and plus a lot, we, we would do some goat as well. Uh huh. And, and what we would about, praise it. And then, then what about, um, and Christmas Eve, because they're supposed to, it's all seafood. Was there, was there pastage de bacalhau? Was there chazoyish de camarão? Any of that? Was that there also? Absolutely. And there was, you know, uh, uh, salada de polvo. And, um, you know, uh, we would do um, what would be uh, uh, gambus arguilho. Mm -hmm. And the mej was tambang. So we would mix it up with a lot of, you, know, you want to do seven or eight types of fish. Yeah. And um, yeah. and sit around the table and spend family time. It's almost like our version of the seven fishes in Italy, Italy. You know, they have the seven fishes. It's kind of our version of it. Um, and uh, so I, I, I think this is a perfect time. We're getting a lot of uh, comments from Facebook that people have octopus salad, shrimp and garlic, chavanavish for dessert, arroz uh, marisco. But David, why don't we show your video? Because it's octopus polvo. And it's fascinating because you roast a whole one. And let's look at that video. It's a short one uh, going in and going out of the oven. And we could talk a little bit about that because that would be more of a Christmas Eve kind of dish. So Angela, roll that beautiful octopus footage. This is the octopus. It's made and done put a little bit of vegetables, leek, celery, uh, onion, carrot. And after put the octopus in the top, Put olive oil. A very green olive oil, very green. It's going over in two hours and uh, 392 Fahrenheit. So David, can you talk no, us through, because we lose the sound. So what are you saying here? Normally, uh, I make the octopus in an oven. It's I'm not put nothing in the water. It's uh, it's it's the octopus. It's cooking in the water. And mm -hmm. normally, I put the the first fifteen minutes, fifteen minutes, I put just olive oil. And after fifteen minutes, put the, a little bit the um, the red wine, and mm -hmm. then put in oven fifteen minutes more. It's the red wine. It's refresh the octopus and they give more flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, and after the 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 second fifteen minutes. It's out in the octopus. It's ready, and, uh, and how do you serve it? Normally, I'm in, in the in the restaurant. I make the polvo de garay. It's I make with the fingerling potatoes and the the sauté spinach with the garlic, and oh. uh, and the roast the octopus with the with bay leaf and the smashed garlic, and mm -hmm. the serve. Normally, it's I make this dish. It's a lot of popular. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying one time to change for the <laughs> the cataplanet polvo with yeah. the potato, but it's every customer speak, where is another octopus, where is another octopus? And I've never touched more in this octopus. I'm like to make the 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 the, the, the roast bowl and but I'm not possible the menu with the three or four dishes, the, the, the octopus. But, yeah. but I, I love everything with the octopus. I love octopus and it's it's almost my favorite thing. It's I like the cook a lot. And have any of you served on Christmas Eve grilled octopus as opposed to stewed octopus? Do you ever do that? No, I mean, my, no, my home, no, it's always the, uh, I know that certain regions in Portugal, they do a roast povo and they mm -hmm. use one thing that is uh, not that well known, they use the dry octopus. Oh, especially on Viena do Castelo. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think some, somewhere in Shards, in Trasmont, some people use the dry octopus. I never tried, and I, I know that in Vienna to Castelo, some uh, fish stores, they sell the dry octopus. And do, is it salted also or just dry, the octopus? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's only dry. It's, right. uh, it does do also the salting process. And then you would just then reconstitute it with water yes. like you do? Wonderful. And um, so I wanted to ask you, a Antonio, when you were making the uh, the cataplana, uh, the bacalhau, you had fresh and you had salted. Now, when you put the salted in there, obviously you had salted it. Had you already cooked it and then put it in the cataplana or was it cooked in the cataplana? It was cooked in the cataplana. Okay. And so, and the fresh codfish, uh, I, I, I refer to it as fresh bacalhau because 
I salted the fresh codfish mm -hmm. for 24 hours. So um, I, I wrapped the fish with a cheesecloth mm -hmm. so that the salt wouldn't uh, penetrate the fish uh, so much. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, buried it in salt in the fridge for 24 hours. And then what I did was I soaked it for what was two and a half days. Okay. And, and so that's a process of turning the fresh cod um, to almost resemble what would be bucket yao, right. almost like a fresh bucket yao, right? Because it's not uh, taken to the degree of shelf, shelf stable fish. It's right. still a fresh looking fish. And the textures of that um, work very nicely together because sometimes bakalyao, you get it and some pieces are um, on the larger sides and some pieces are the tail and the thinner size. So we like, we, we have a big family. So everybody wants a piece of bakalyao. So it's a nice way of let's say, making sure there's plenty of fish and uh -huh. the textural play is pretty cool as well. That's very, that's very interesting. I would love to see how you do that. Uh, we got a couple more questions. Someone asked if it was 15 minutes for the octopus in the beginning or 50? 50, five zero. Five zero, five zero. And then another person asks, does anyone make pork roasted with garlic, paprika, and cinnamon? To me, that sounds more Azorian with the cinnamon. Um, yes. That's in, in my mind. Uh, but no one, you guys, none of, none of you make it with, uh, no with paprika and cinnamon and garlic. Okay. And another question uh, from Facebook is, what was the name of the pork dish from the north that Chef Jose, Jose referred to? Uh, R-O-J-O-A-S. Which is uh, chunks of pork, right? Yes, exactly. And what cut? Uh, basically, the rojones are made uh, from the cachaça, from the neck, mm -hmm. the neck, the belly, more or less the same cuts. Yes, to be cuts, they're very fatty cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they do. And they, we, they cook on pork fat, like a confit, basically. And uh, they used to have these big uh, these containers in um, clay where we, they store it for months. So we cover with pork fat <clears throat> and they preserve them for a while. Yes. And when they need it, they just with a with a wooden spoon, they take uh, the pieces they need it, and then we fry them and we eat them. But it was also a way to preserve uh, the meat for for a long time. Yeah, because that's so, what my family did in the Azores. They would they had one pig a year, and they would slaughter it in December, and so much of it in the Chazones were also put into a pot. It was filled with the fat, and it preserved. And they would just scoop it out, and they would fry that. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's. Um, so excellent, excellent. I'm just looking at also the comments and questions coming in. And so moving, let's move a little bit more since we have um, a little bit of time. Let's move from the meats, right? So we have Christmas Eve, all the fish, bakalyao, purvu, all the different appetizers, the fish, the shrimp, the bakalyao, uh, the stage, the bakalyao. What would you have? And then you would have, what's for breakfast on Christmas day? Anything? For me, it was <laughs> Sorry, what did you say, Jose? I couldn't For hear you. For me, it was super vegan, you know. That was breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> David, what, would, what did you have for Christmas? I, I'm, I'm like the, the make one thing. It's, it's, I love this. It's make the little bit the, the bulgai. It's slice and the toast and put butter. It's I'm like this. <laughs> right. now, Antonio, how about you? Every time, every time in my home. It's my mom is prep uh, one one table with the uh, sweet things. It's a lot of a lot of sugar, but it's it's every time I have the table the crisp, the Christmas table and uh, have the codfish cake, have the lampreya, bulgai, pondlo, uh, have everything things in here. It's normally it's the, the breakfast. It's in, in this table, <laughs> and yeah. after make the hope of value. <laughs> and Antonio, how about for you? Breakfast, rabanadas. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, someone just said it might not be traditional, but scrambled eggs with alieta is amazing. Ooh, <laughs> amazing, <laughs> for sure. Totally yeah. agree. It's, a good idea. it's a great breakfast. A great breakfast. So let's move on to some of the sweets now. Um, David, you mentioned some already: the lamprea, the habanada, pontolol. What are some of the desserts that would always show up on your all of your tables 
for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, um, for desserts. It's a bohai, la praia. Uh, so what's bohai for those? I, I don't know this. Bohai. bohai? Yeah. It's, it's uh, the, the, the cake, it's with the dry fruit. Oh, bohai. Uh, sorry. Bohai. Okay. I'm thinking that's one word. Uh, yeah, bohai. We have the... Um, Das Vias, my mom it's make das Vias the with the with the garbanzo beans. It's uh -huh. every year, and they need the peel the garbanzo for the make the, the the paste for the put inside. It's, uh -huh. it's very good, and have the cuscrões, have sonhos de abóbora. It's my grandmother every years make the sonhos de abóbora, and the, this is the the rabanadas, uh, Normally, this is have in my home in the Christmas. All right, I've got a bunch of questions coming in, so hang on, guys. And, and David, there is here a question about uh, what is Lampreya. Lampreya, exactly. That's what I was going And I, I think maybe David could also, one of you could also explain that uh, the sonhos, they are sonhos de abóbora, and there are others. They are all traditional at Christmas. Uh, in my family, my father-in-law wants the abóbora ones. My husband wants the other ones. Um, there's a lot of cinnamon and other spices that go into these. So, um, which is, you know, something that I guess we brought back from all the explorations um, so, uh, to bring to the cuisine. Do you want to explain what, um, uh, sorry, uh, lampreya is? So lampreya is the, it's a holy egg yolks. <laughs> it's a, it's a make the fused of and the, the make the, um, and they make the, the mold, the the the, 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 the eel, yes. Yeah. And they, and they put everything is the fears of, and they put the, the cape for the egg yolks. Mm -hmm. It's, it, I'm, I'm amazing. I'm, I'm love, it's my favorite. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let me, for those only, who don't know, uh, only, let me play it means eel. Yeah, it's uh, only it's the egg yolks and the sugar. <laughs> That's all it is. The, the, yeah. the, the egg yolk desserts. And then so sonyoj, as uh, Magda was saying, some of them are abobada, which is pumpkin. Some of them are plain. Do one of you and Antonio or Jose want to explain a little bit more about sonyoj, exactly what they are? Maybe you should Antonio because I, I'm, my my family dessert was one scene for Christmas that everybody was looking for or Cage de Serra. So we are, we are not a sweet family. So besides Rabanadas, was Cage de Serra at the table. That's what all of us are looking for. So maybe yeah. Antonio can Antonio. know it too better sure. than me. So um, in, in, our, in our house, we did what is a version of Sonyos is Falosh. It's uh, essentially uh, uh, just a different um, size. The Falosh is the size of, let's say, the palm of your hand and can manipulate in the oil to look like a flower. Um, and the sonyos is more like uh, what would be um, considered a munchkin, but a little bit larger from Dunkin' Donuts here in the United States. Right. And um, we use pumpkin as well, uh, pumpkin puree in the batter, um, which a lot of people really enjoy. It takes it to another level, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, but using aguardent, in making it, so it's uh, sugar, uh, aguardent, salt, um, trigo, flour. Uh, you can mix up a uh, whole wheat or your uh, straightforward um, AP. Um, and essentially, you know, uh, I used to say to my, my grandmother and to my mother that they were so strong, you know, and my aunt, my tia Rosa, because they had like these shoulders on them and, you know, they were tough. And it's the truth because, you know, spending 45 minutes to an hour to incorporate all those ingredients and get those lumps out mm -hmm. is the whole technique of, of, of it. And, you know, it's um, patience that is clearly uh, a Portuguese kitchen. And mm -hmm. it's why, you know, when we go to Portugal and we get grandmas, and, and moms that um, are, are there and making these things, it's what really hits our soul yeah. and, and our tummy all at the same time, right? So, yeah. um, it, but 
the work ethic that goes into these things. There's Maybe. no, if you don't have patience and, you know, it's worth every second. And I, I promise you, you know, get your shoulders prepared. Everyone go out there and attack this and do it properly. But it's, it's really worth it. The end result is amazing. So for your Feloge, you're talking about a yeasted dough, right? Yeah, exactly. Have you ever had Feloges that are made like a, a, a shoe pastry? Have you ever yeah. had that? Yes, I have. They're very so I different. had a pastry chef uh, it, it, that, that introduced me to that. And it, it's very, very different. Very and different. But guess what? Both are very delicious. So, right. yeah. So I have a big question for you because my family's from the Azores. What's the difference between a Molisava and a Filoge? I mean, they're, they look almost alike. Right? And I want to say that they're the same thing, except, you know, everyone's calling it what they Something call it. Different. Right? I agree with you. So, I think it's almost uh, the same. They, yeah. Yeah, I agree. It, it I is. Agree. It is. Because I, I looked into that and we made malasadas and they were, my mother told me and corrected me and said, this is a falash son. So, <laughs> and it, you know, it really said, depends on where you're from. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, some of the things that are coming in from people are midnight, Christmas day, midnight on Christmas day, they have kanja, which is wonderful. Uh, yeah. Bolo of the caramello, sonyush. Um, a bolo chenya, bedim davo, brawinish, bolo de mel. Um, I can never pronounce this. Course, C O S C O R O E S. Course, not corazon. Thank you. That one, that one, I never can pronounce it. It's delicious. Um, and we have some questions coming in about cocktails. What are some of the traditional drinks and cocktails? Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Celebrating. Well, to, to us, it uh, was all wine. I mean, we did not, uh, maybe I would say when you were kids, maybe my father would like to have a scotch or something like this, but no, nothing big in cocktails. You know, there was, uh, you are from the vineyard region. And of course, uh, with the bacalao, you were drinking uh, vineyard tinto. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, uh, but that's about it. So it was not no, too much fuss no about cocktails. Life. No, no fortified wines, white port, uh, uh, anything like that. Well, the port, yes, we, yes, port will be with the cage de serre. Was a big tradition now at home. So when you grab the cage de serre, and you know, my father will go down to whatever he has his wines, and you pull off a, a nice vintage port to, to drink with cage de serre. Okay, excellent. We, How about you, Antonio? We, we would start with uh, my father was always with the sweet vermouth, and the lemon peel um, over ice mm -hmm. um, as a sort of an aperitif to start to, to start the evening. But we most definitely drank uh, wine and celebrated uh, Portuguese winemakers um, through through the dinner. It was um, it's it, and, and definitely uh, fortified wines uh, after dinner to go along and cut through all of the sugar <laughs> and egg. And, 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 that we're going to uh, be consuming. So, <laughs> and David, what about you? Anything? Never, any cocktails? The, the vermouth is it's in the same. And the uh, white wine, red wine, and for the Finnish, it's port and Madeira. And port and Madeira. Okay. Some people are saying vinho, vinho, it to poise, vinho to porto. So, so <laughs> that, that was it. White wine, white port wine. <laughs> and, uh, some people would have caldo verde, of course. Um, which is, you know, wonderful. And um, we also had, we had soap at the cove in the Azores, my family, we never had caldo verde, we had soap at the cove, which is kind of a, a rough cousin of caldo verde. And um, so why don't we do this now, since we have a little bit of time, let's show uh, uh, Amandua Amarga, um, but why don't we show the video, Angela, of um, the phylogis that, that Antonio made? Makes me very hungry. So we're going to start sieving, we're making foulage. We're going to sieve the, the flour. And he has a double sieve. Very there. important is that the eggs are out of the refrigerator uh, when preparing this because you need them to be at least room temperature. Everything that you incorporate into this 
has to be warm and not cold. So at this time, what I'm going to add is the, this is the ferment, and I'm just gonna mix that into the flour. And I'm gonna make a ditch in the center here, cause I'm gonna work inside of here, yeah? I'm gonna add the eggs. Two spoons of salt, and then it's about working 45 minutes. Incorporating all of these ingredients together and making sure that there's no, what is like little knots or everything being smooth, a beautiful dough, almost similar to a bread dough. Once you've added the aguardente and you really start to smell the ferment working, and this starts to become what is a falosh. From kneading, you cover it with a panu, and you let it rest for a half an hour. You'll see that the dough will increase double the size, and you want to see that beautiful yellow color. Now I'm bringing our vegetable oil up to about 350 degrees. And I'm gonna add some olive oil to my hands here. One thing I always noticed was my grandmother was so tough and my mother, and I guess that was from working on the foulage. Because believe it or not, that, that 45 minutes to an hour, it's a serious work, yeah? And it is very, very important that this gets worked thin because uh, the worst thing you could have is uh, a thick foulage. That's not, uh, that won't make sense. And then you have to have some fine sugar and cinnamon. You mix that up. This is gonna be the finish that is gonna make this dish what is sweet. And I have a little bit of paper here just to soak out the oil when we take the foulage out of this uh, vessel. Almost there, this is gonna get hot very quick. and a little extra sprinkle. And that's cinnamon and fine sugar. I use sugar cane. Falosh. Looks great. Beautiful color, too. Beautiful, beautiful color. Oh, no, of course. Great, thank you for that. So of course, in the Portuguese, with our spice trade, and we went all around the world, canela, cinnamon, we brought these kind of things back, and, and, and as well as other spices, and um, cinnamon plays such a huge role in all the desserts. I mean, pistache de, uh, pistache de bacalhau, pistache de nata, and so many different recipes with that, and that looks terrific. And if you wanted to make a batch, Antonio, for the family, would you just keep the oven at a low temperature, fry them, put them in the oven to hold them, and then serve them? You know, um, we would do them the day before. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we would eat them both room temperature and there's absolutely nothing wrong with throwing them back in the oven. Uh -huh. um, we would usually would last to the 26th. So mm -hmm. on the 26th, I would throw them in the oven and uh, be very happy <laughs> because you can never get enough of, uh, you know, a nice cup of coffee. We're Portuguese, so yeah. an espresso with yeah. with a with a foulage, just that's a, a, a perfect marriage. And so, would you sugar and and put sugar and cinnamon on it the day before, or would you do that that day? Yes, the day before. No, right, absolutely, the day before. 
So following that, that, that procedure and then having them sit, we would put them into an aluminum tray and just wrap them in plastic, a film wrap. And yeah. let me That's tell a- you, you know, um, when done thin, you get those crunchy spots and the soft spots and it, it, it holds very well. Yeah, that's exactly what my my uh, grandmother, uh, my father's mother, Vavo Late, would do. She'd make these big, big trays of malasavish, and um, you know she would do it over her knee. She would stretch it over her knee, so sometimes in the middle it'd be very, very thin, and that's where it was crunchy. Then it'd be it'd be sort of more chewy around the outsides. Um, sorry, my cat is wanting to be in the picture. Um, so amazing. Uh, uh, it, 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 it really was amazing. Uh, and there was something I was going to ask and I forgot what it was. So any other questions coming in, Angela, from Facebook? Let me see. Um, I forgot I was going to ask something about Mullah and something else. And I forgot now because you froze and I was nervous that we had lost you, Antonio. So, um, oh, someone says uh, we're making everyone hungry. I know we are. Absolutely, I know we are. Do any of you make- But, but that, that part, that thin part, it is, is that very special spot. Uh, say again, you broke up a little bit. That thin spot, it, it, it's, um, it's texturally special. It is, because you know what's <laughs> you know, coming from your knee. Uh, the thin, when, when working it over the knee, I'll try yeah. that. <laughs> exactly. Thomas. <laughs> and she stretch it over the knee and then there'd be this thin spot in the middle and it's crunchy and it's it's almost like a bialy you know bialy is thin in the middle it's kind of the same yeah. thing but it's a portuguese I, bialy that's sweet yeah. <laughs> um and so uh so sorry i gotta put the cat <laughs> in again she really wants to be in the in the picture um and so have <laughs> any of you made pastage the nata for christmas or christmas eve no never you just buy it, right? Yeah, I'm the only idiot who makes it <laughs> instead of buying it. Okay, we got some uh, questions. Someone is recommending to heat up the phalanges in the air fryer the next day. That's interesting. In an air fryer the next day. That could heat it up. There's no oil being added. Uh, and that definitely could heat it up. That's a nice suggestion. Also, maybe the toaster oven. We have a couple of them. And um, so, Angela, we have about eight minutes. Are there any other questions that people, or uh, Magda, that people want to have answered? I know one of the things is all of these recipes, everyone, we're going to have them typed up and put on the page because I know that I want to make all of them. I'm sure you do too. So they're all going to be added to the page. Um, okay, so David, someone- we, we have a comment here. Um, Maria Freitas, uh, she says that her family is from the Azores. How and many? they made filhosos with a hole in the middle. Yes, yes, some people do that. Yes, with the hole. Again, kind of that donut thing. It's where it allows the middle not to be thick and soggy. Um, so that's that's excellent. Um, gentlemen, castanhas. How do you make them? This is one of my father's favorites. How do you make castanhas? Well, to me, my favorite castanhas that you used to eat uh, all winter long or fall, whenever the castanha season was boiled castanhas. Mm-hmm. Although I love the castanhas that we buy in the street, mm-hmm. but to me, the only good the ones bought on the street. I never was able at home uh, because of the way they're cooking on charcoal. You cannot re- replicate that in home. So you have to eat them in the street. But at home, we used to be castanhas cozidas. We were very simple in salt and water. We, we have to crisscross on top. You put on a pot, you bring to a bowl, uh, you let them uh, boil down there, and at the end, you just uh, eat that with butter. They're absolutely delicious. And, and the fresh uh, sea salt. For me, it's my favorite way to eat castanhas. So nothing sweet about them at all for you? Not sweet. No. No, it's just with the, with the salt and the, and, the, and, the, and the butter, right? You said butter? butter. Butter, 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 yes, butter. And Antonio David, uh, castanhas, do you make them at all? Eu faço assadas e faço cozidas também. O que há? É nem mim? Sal. Sal? Não, mas não há, não há tradição de fazer alguma coisa em casa com castanhas. Okay. Só, só sou cozidas e assadas. But the most important thing, folks, if you're making them at home, is to do what José said, is to make that cross in the top, because what that does is allows the moisture in and allows it to start to pull back from the nut itself and the skin, which is very thick. 
it allows it to pull back and it's easier also to pull and to open up. So um, don't make them in the crock pot. It doesn't work well. So someone is saying, don't make the kastanjas in the crock pot. Um, so uh, Magda, another question. I think there's one from you, no? Magda? No, there isn't a, a question, but I do have a personal question, which is, what is the difference between rabonada and French toast? Mm. It's made with Portuguese <laughs> or is the French toast yeah. an American Portuguese version of the rabonada? <laughs> I think the bread is about the same thing. It's maybe the type of bread they would do French toast. They usually is a loaf of bread. You use more like a pomme centay or a more, more a country bread. But uh, the principle is the same, I guess. And also we don't put maple syrup. Uh, mm -hmm. You put the, you the own syrup doing the, the sugar syrup that you use and cinnamon when you do the rabanadas at the end, you do a little syrup and you pour it over. So, but I guess it's the same principle, I could say. They probably are distant cousins, so to speak. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of wine. <laughs> a little bit what you said? I'm sorry, David? Port wine. Port wine. Oh, Wonderful. port wine. Because okay. my grandmother would make rabanadas or fatias doradas um, with uh, stale... A masa sovada, which is sweet bread, Portuguese sweet bread, and it was it was you know it was, we hadn't eaten it, and she'd make it out that for breakfast, and oh my god, that was so amazing! It was just the, it was her masa, and she'd make habanadas, and it was excellent, and it was never you could not put maple syrup on. We were only allowed to put cinnamon and sugar. That's all we could put on it. She wouldn't allow us to put maple syrup. Um, and someone said uh, once they made castanhas without cutting the cross on top, and they exploded. And then someone asked about this. I, Angela's not sure of the spelling, and neither am I. Es, espis, I don't, E S P E I C E. We're not sure of the spelling. Angela, can you tell us what that is, maybe? Um, someone made a, a habanada souffle. Okay, there was something I was going to ask. Espes. So Espes. Any okay. other questions? Espes. Okay. Do you guys know what that is? No. I don't know. Is that a kind of flower? It's little the little horseshoe looking desserts oh. that have like a nutmeg filling. With little slices on them? Yes. I think that's very, I think it's from the Azores. Um, yes. Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah Duarte Bills actually has a recipe for that. And um, if that's the recipe, if that's what I'm thinking of, and they're amazing, uh, and he does them and they're just perfect. Um, so getting back to chabanadas, someone made a souffle and you can make a bread pudding out of obviously chabanadas too, which would be amazing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things you can do chabanadas. So you have chabavalia and you have um, the bread pudding of leftover uh, of bread or, or masa sovada. Um, so we're just about wrapping up now. So any I just have one more question, David, sorry. Uh, we talked briefly about cheese, and it was mentioned that in the north of Portugal and in Beira Alta, which where I spend Christmas normally as well, um, you know, Queijo da Serra is a big, uh, takes on a, a big uh, role. Um, what about other regions of Portugal? Um, in the Azores, there are wonderful cheeses. Do they also feature in the, on the Christmas table? Um, For us, they do. Queijo San Jorge. Uh, was mm -hmm. always at the table. Uh, also, there's another dessert that one of my aunts made called shispirush, which is meringues. Um, they were like little meringues, basically like little pavlovas. Um, and, um, but there was, the cheese was always, that it was also, always queijo San George is what we had. Um, what about you gentlemen? Any other cheeses that you had from other places, other regions in the, the country? It's uh, queijo de serra and, uh, and um, azeitão. Queijo da Ilha também. Queijo da Ilha, sim. Normalmente have a little bit cheese, but the, the queijo da Serra, yes. That's the, <laughs> that's the king of cheeses. That's an exquisite yeah. cheese. Uh, Someone so here there, in the in Zoom the, is saying uh, requeijão for breakfast. Yes, I love it too, and it's one thing we cannot get here at all. Um, <laughs> and someone yeah. is saying that you have to add marmalada to the queijo with the pão de lo which of course, yeah, yeah. Mama Lava is wonderful. And um, de, uh, and uh, Antonio, any cheeses that you guys serve for Christmas or Christmas Eve? Uh, because my mother was from Guarda, Seya, 
mm -hmm. was one of the cheeses that we would, uh, you know, try to always have at the house um, and we would have it as appetizers. And one other dessert that we would always have was Latria uh, during yeah. Christmas, yeah. which is the noodle pudding. Yes, yes. I um, wanted to throw that in. <laughs> yeah, it was very, it's very typical in North Portugal, your Latria. Yeah. Clear. And then someone is saying that people are saying that in Portugal, Santa leaves fruit in your stocking. What fruit do you get? Um, someone in Canada, you get a mandarin orange. And in Australia, you get a whole pineapple. Um, what about the regions that your families are from? Did Santa put fruit in those stockings? No. Um, no. 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 Uh, not uh, <laughs> no. I was in America. I made sure that I got lots of presents and toys. I didn't want fruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So roasted figs with Everdos and almonds. That's that's lovely. That's very that's nice. Great. And um, and Magda, what about you? What's on your table Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? Uh, Christmas Eve, um, I spend it at me, my in-laws in near Viseu. So mm -hmm. we very traditional there. We have bacalhau cozido con todos. Mm -hmm. um, with some olive oil that he he grows the olives. So we have our own olive oil. Um, and uh, for those that are not so keen on codfish, we'll have some of filets de peixe or filets de polvo. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few appetizers and we start on the desserts. But the following day is when we have all our extended family come over and we can be up to 45 sometimes and wow. everybody brings something. My mother-in-law does make a roasted turkey and we use um, chestnuts for the stuffing Nothing. and yeah. as an accompaniment. And then uh, um, different people with different traditions bring other foods. Um, my family, part of my family comes from, um, my husband's family from Goa. So we also have curries. Oh, um, and then we have many, many desserts. Like David Costa was saying, we have a whole table um, that is set out with all the desserts and cheeses and the pound de law and the bolo rey. And it's basically there for the three days or until they finished. Uh, the house is old, it's granite walls and there is like a cellar type of thing, which works as a walk-in freezer fridge for us. And uh -huh. that's where we keep the food. But we do make kanja late in the evening on, on Christmas day, after we know we've been five hours around the table, then we get back at the table around nine for Kanja. And, um, and we also do Ropa Velha, like, uh, you know, everyone was talking about. It's just a few closing comments. People are saying that they really love this hour. I know you guys can't see that right now, but they're saying they really love this hour. And they want to thank all of you wonderful speakers. And a couple of last dessert ideas, uh, chocolate mousse with walnuts. Yes. Also salami de chocolat and serdura are also big. People love those. And I think with that, um, I just wanted to say thank you, David, Antonio, and Jose. It is an honor to be here with you such talented chefs and Magda, thank you. And Angela, thank you very much for inviting me and having me be the host. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wish everyone there out there a wonderful holiday, a wonderful and safe holiday season. Thank, thank you very thank you, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of, uh, yes, thank you so much for joining. On behalf of Palkush and the chamber, we want to thank you all. Again, we want to thank the chefs who gave their time both yes. cooking and then to be here with us, to David for being our moderator and always being available and to seek SPT for their collaboration and support and to all the Palkas staff also that helped uh, put this together. Thank you all for participating. We wish you um, all the best for the coming weeks and for the holidays and stay safe. David, if you wanna say the last word, is yours. Feliz Natal. How's that? Muito obrigada. Obrigado. Um bom ano. Tchau, tchau. Bye-bye. Obrigada. Tchau. Tchau, everybody. Tchau. Thank you.